All right, we've been here before. This is the pile of casings left over from the Shell Shock Technologies uh, thousand round test that we did. We left these cases on the range specifically for the purpose of discussing galvanic corrosion. Uh, a lot of people thought that there would be uh, galvanic corrosion associated with these because we have two dissimilar metals uh, sitting here uh, in close contact. That's not actually the case because you have nickel on nickel. Uh, but what we thought we would do is we would leave them on the range and see how they turned out after some time. So go back and look at the publishing date of that video and, uh, and see how long these have been laying here. Uh, we've pulled a couple samples and we also put some in a salt bath for this entire time as well just to see what the difference is. We're going to pick up some of these and then we're going to run back to the workshop where we have a little bit better lighting and we can take a look at these casings. We're going to pull a couple of them apart. We're going to actually destroy a few of these cases for science coming up right here right now on the VSO Gun Channel. All right, first off, what is galvanic corrosion and what are we looking for? I understand that not every single person in the audience is a chemist as I used to be, so I will throw some photos up on screen so that you guys can try to identify you know, what it is we're actually looking for. Galvanic corrosion is the process by which two dissimilar metals interact in an electrolyte to preferentially corrode or oxidize one of the set of metals. There is still going to be a baseline of oxidation of both metals regardless of their interaction between, their, between each other relative to the environment. So what exactly are we looking at with these cases? We have an unknown ferromagnetic alloy containing nickel, which forms the body of the case, and a nickel-plated aluminum base. If this was just steel on aluminum, we would expect the aluminum base to corrode or oxidize because aluminum is the least noble of those two metals. Well, sort of. The exception to the rule is aluminum itself automatically forms an oxide layer as soon as it comes in contact with oxygen in the atmosphere. This is what gives aluminum its somewhat dull surface look when you look at a piece of aluminum. It's the aluminum oxide on the surface. So for two parts to corrode, one of steel, one of aluminum, there would have to be constant friction between the two surfaces that would wipe away the oxide layer and expose the base aluminum to the electrolyte. Anyway, the chemistry lesson aside, so what did we do and what did we see? First, new pictures. We're gonna have to have new pictures to compare these things to so you guys can see exactly what they look like right when they came out of the box. These pictures were taken uh, right before we did the thousand round test. After the thousand round test, we left the cases on the range and took samples at 30, 60, and 90 days. Immediately following the test, I took 10 casings, stuffed them in my pocket, and brought them back and put them in a brine bath where they sat for 90 days. So, looking at all these cases, the 30, 60, and 90 day cases that were just left on the range, you can see standard oxidation on both the body and the base just from sitting out there. There's really nothing remarkable between the three sets. Just a little bit of standard level oxidation. We're going to move on to the brine bath. Clearly, lots of salt and some degradation on both metals here, but still pretty much aligning with their level of corrosion or oxidation. So let's go ahead and break these things apart. That's where we should expect to see galvanic corrosion if we're going to see any. And pretty much we don't see anything. And the reason we don't see anything either on the case body 
which we did not expect to see galvanic corrosion on because it is more noble. And the base, we didn't see anything, is because there is indeed a nickel layer still intact on top of the aluminum base. That nickel layer is serving as a valent insulator between the aluminum base and the ferromagnetic body. And underneath, you can see clear, normal levels of aluminum oxide when we scratch that away. So I would say that the claims of shell shock technology are actually quite valid in this respect. I can say from our test that I don't expect any users in the field to see any galvanic corrosion after any amount of time using these cases, especially throughout the projected life of these cases under normal use. So I know this isn't exactly what we were looking to uncover in this test. Uh, usually when a company makes uh, lofty claims as Shellshock Technologies has in this case, we, uh, we tend to think it's too good to be true. Well, at least in the galvanic corrosion uh, side of the house, their claims appear to be uh, quite accurate. If you guys found this video informative, please hit that like button and uh, comment down below, let us know. If you think that we earned your subscription here today, please hit that subscribe button and also share the video around so that your friends can learn from it as well. Thanks for watching the VSO Gun Channel and hopefully we'll see you guys on a future video.